a very good morning to all today we will start the unit 6 material for electronic components so this is the first lecture of uh, unit 6 so the content that we will cover in this lecture 1 of unit 6 is the resistors then in lecture 2 we will cover the inductors and capacitors so first we will uh, introduce this uh, materials for electronic components as we know that the design and manufacture of components for electronics has grown to become an industry by itself. So this uh, unit will present only a simple but brief introduction to a vast field of study. And we know the common electronic components are resistors, inductors, condensers, means capacitors, transformers, rectifiers and relays. <coughs> so in this unit 6 we will cover the resistors, inductors and capacitors. So the first we will see the resistors. So there are two types of resistors, carbon composition resistors and wire wound resistors. So the first uh, carbon composition resistors and there are various types of these carbon composition resistors. So first we will see the molded. So this molded carbon composition resistor is a type of resistor and is manufactured in both the insulated and uninsulated form. So the internal constructional details of some typical resistors are shown in figure, right? And uh, that are there are two types of these resistors that is shown in figure 12.1 and 12.2. So in the manufacture of pressed carbon uh, resistors, the raw materials carbon black resin binder and refractory filling are first graded then mixed in the required proportion and then sifted so this powder is then compressed into the shape of a resistor by automatic die presses and then curd in a kiln so automatic sorting of the resistors according to their value is then done before applying the color code so the following three modes are employed to provide end connections so first uh, method is metal spraying at the ends and soldering tinned copper wire round them second uh, method is molding of the enlarged ends of the connecting wire directly into the carbon rod and third one is the pressing of a metal cap over the metal sprayed end right so these are the, the two uh, types of the uh, molded carbon composition resistor so the outer cover is paint coating right that you will see in the figures then the inner side is the resistive carbon composition and then sprayed metal solder contacts are there right and whatever there is the, the resistive carbon composition then the end connections are there and there are three methods to, uh, to provide the end connections right now Second one is the insulated molded resistor, insulated molded carbon composition resistors. So a thermosetting plastic insulation is molded around some carbon composition resistors. So another form of insulated composition resistor has ceramic insulator. Which insulator? That is ceramic insulator. The carbon and binder materials are mixed but extra materials are also added to make the mix suitable for extrusion right but the extra materials are also added to make the mix suitable for extrusion so after heat treatment the rods are placed in ceramic tube and brass caps fitted over the copper sprayed end that is shown in figure so here again there is a resistive carbon composition then the end uh, end caps are there then the embedded connection wire and molded thermosetting plastic cover so outer one is the resistive carbon composition right then in second there is the end ceiling cement and again there is a resistive carbon composition rod inside the second one that is in figure 12.4 and and uh, that is uh, there is what ceramic tube uh, covered to the end cap of the resistor so this is the insulated molded carbon composition resistor now uh, third one is the film type resistors 
the carbon mix in this case is in liquid form and by drawing a glass tube through the suspension a uniform coating of the resistive material is formed on the outside of the tube so fixing and curing of the coating is done by heating the coated tube in a continuous oven so the terminal wires are shaped as shown in figure that is 12.5 so how the terminals are shaped that fixing and curing the coating is done by heating the coated tube in a continuous oven oven and the terminals where terminal wires are shaped how the terminals wires are shaped here that they are curved right so outer covering uh, is of glass tube then uh, there is a plastic molding inside then end connections are there and they are they are molded in the form of curve right and uh, this is known as what end of metal sprayed carbon composition that is solder type so this is the solder type of uh, resistor and then inside the rod there is a wire termination inserted inside tube to conduct away heat right so to taken out the heat the wire termination is inserted inside the tube so that's why uh, as shown in figure uh, the terminal wires are shaped and are fitted inside the glass tube and secured in place with the conducting material so the whole assembly is then molded in a thermosetting plastic case that's why the outer cover is of plastic molding that is what glass tube now the next one is the cracked carbon resistor the value of resulting resistance is controlled by the pressure of vapor temperature of firing and time of exposure that's why the process of cracking carbon on ceramic rod consists of what decomposition of a suitable hydrocarbon vapor at about 900 to 1100 degrees celsius onto ceramic rod to produce a coherent carbon layer which forms a stable resistor so this type of resistor is sometimes called a pyrolytic resistor why because here the ceramic rod consists of decomposition of a suitable hydrocarbon vapor at about 900 to 1100 degrees celsius right onto ceramic rod and that's why it is known as pyrolytic resistors so following are the main stages in the manufacture of a cracked carbon resistor so the first stage is the preparation of the ceramic body then cracking the resistive coating then spiraling to final value and testing fitting end caps then fifth stage is uh, protecting carbon layer by varnish or ceramic tube and the uh, last one is the final testing and labeling now the next resistor is alloy resistors so alloy here is used that is nickel chromium and is generally evaporated to form a film which possesses good adhesion to glass or ceramic substrate following stable resistors so a resistor film of 50 ampere degree thickness has been formed to be thinnest film stable over long periods so the nickel chromium can be evaporated from boards from boards containing nickel chromium alloy or it can be submitted or it can be sub sublimated by heating a wire on nickel chromium directly by passing a current through it right so how the nickel chromium can be evaporated from the boards that it can be sublimated by heating a wire of nickel chromium directly how by passing a current through it now the next one is metallic oxide film resistor so in this type of metallic oxide film resistor the layer may vary in thickness from a few hundreds to many thousands of armstrong unit and has a milky translucent appearance and is electrically conducting that's why when a solution of stannic chloride is sprayed on a glass or porcelain at red heat then hydrolysis takes place and it is a glass like layer of oxide so the additions of antimony trichloride to the spraying solution impart a blue color 
to the oxide layer and that's why no film will be produced with pure antimony trichloride pure antimony trichloride solution so oxide so oxide film obtained by this process are hard adherent to glass and ceramics and unaffected by chemical reagents so besides the electrical resistance can be varied over a wide range of values by changing the composition or spraying solution that's why usually these uh, films which have comparatively small temperature coefficients of resistance and small resistivities are used right there are some of the advantages of oxide film resistors and that are no oxidation occurs in this case the soldering of end connection is comparatively easy and the maximum temperature rating is higher than that of carbon and reasonably low temperature coefficient now the next is the wire wound resistor in case of wire wound resistor powder power type resistors are generally capable of dissipating appreciable amounts of power and that's why these wire wound uh, resistors are also known as wire wound power type resistors so the general design in uh, design in construction are shown in figure and the resistance that is 80% nickel and 20% chromium wire corresponding to the required value of resistance is wound on a ceramic former capable of withstanding thermal shocks so the connecting wires are usually welded to the ends of the winding and in some types corrosion of the weld is prevented by lacquer vitreous enamel how by using the lacquer vitreous enamel so i shown in figure there is a ceramic tube former and then inside the ceramic tube former there is a rod then end cap is there and that end cap is uh, of nickel chromium wire nickel chrome wire welded to resistance wire and braced to end cap and then nickel chromium or nickel copper resistance wind winding is there outside and then tinned copper wire solder to end cap and there is what then to avoid the corrosion vitreous enamel coating is provided there are four main types of construction of wound rotor resistors that is wire wound resistors so first is open and open wound so in open wound the resistor consists of simple solenoid winding on a ceramic tube or rod so some formers have groove depending on the wire used and expansion connected when dissipating full power when dissipating full power right so such resistors are also constructed by double spiral or coiled coil process in which the resistance wire is first helically wound on a braided core of glass fibers or similar material and this is and this in turn is wound on a grooved ceramic rod then the second uh, type of construction of wound uh, wire wound resistor is cement coated these resistors have a layer of suitable cement to provide mechanical protection so the cement coating through less expense though loss uh, so the cement coating though less expensive is not moisture proof then the third method of uh, construction of wire wound uh, resistor is lacquered so lacquered so these resistors have a moisture proof layer of lacquer or organic varnish so temperature limitation of 150 degrees celsius limits the maximum voltage and the next method of construction for of uh, wire wound resistor is vitreous enamel so these resistors have a covering of vitreous enamel over the resistance wire and this provides excellent protection against moisture and ensures good mechanical protection to the wire so the resistors of this type are suitable for use under extreme conditions of temperature and humidity provided the enamel remains un ungrazed so the vitreous coating is non inflammable and there is therefore no fire risks from heavy overload that may arise from faults so the enamel is a good electrical insulator but these resistors are not called as insulated 
right but here the enamel is a good electrical insulator but these resistors are not called as insulated due to very low insulation resistance at high temperatures why due to low insulation resistance at high temperatures now we will see the high value resistors these resistors are usually of the carbon composition film type and the resistive element consists of a thin carbon film on a small ceramic rod which is sealed in an evacuated type so the outside of the glass is coated with lacquer to minimize the effect of moisture so the element can be spiraled to give a fine control of resistance value the important requirements of this type of resistor are low temperature coefficient and good stability the non linear resistors this includes such components as the thermistor that is non linear with respect to temperature and current and varistor that is non linear with respect to voltage so the non linear resistors are two types and that is the thermistor and varistor first we'll see the thermistors the name thermistor is derived from thermally sensitive resistor and is applied to a device that possesses a high temperature coefficient so while metallic conductors have a very low temperature coefficient of resistance certain oxides have values ranging from about 5 percentage per degree celsius to 60 percentage per degree celsius so the two types of thermistors are distinguished according to the sign of the temperature thermistors that is negative temperature coefficient holds the resistance decreases with temperature and positive temperature coefficient that is ptc thermistors holds resistance increases with temperature the major oxides used for present day thermistors are of nickel manganese copper oxides nickel cobalt manganese copper nickel cobalt magnet copper oxides cobalt magnet or copper oxides and then iron titanium oxides then nickel lithium and cobalt lithium oxides so addition of oxides such as iron and magnesium to the magnet oxide based system is also practiced so the negative temperature coefficient that is ntc thermistors are essentially two terminal ceramic devices that are manufactured in three basic shapes as discs rods or beads for the discs and rod shapes the coefficient uh, the constituent oxides are intimately mixed to a predetermined formula and that's why binder is added and the mixture is pressed or extruded into the required shape so the ceramic bodies are then heat treated either in air or in a controlled atmosphere at temperature in the region of 1200 degrees celsius so du during this process the binder material is burnt out the constituent oxides react to form the desired composition and the material sinters to form a hard ceramic body so the silver paste is either painted sprayed or printed onto the opposite faces of the disc or the ends of a rod then fired into the ceramic to form an ohmic contact so the leads are attached to the silver contact usually by soldering and the final device is coated with an insulating paint or resin layer the bead uh, sorry the bead thermistors are manufactured by forming a small blob of semiconductor oxide mixture between two parallel platinum or platinum platinum alloy wires so the wires are heat treated to about 1200 degrees celsius and thermistor material shrinks onto the wire forming a sintered bead with good mechanical and electrical contact to the wires so the platinum wires are then welded to thicker supporting lead lead out wires and the bead encap encapsulated either in a gas filled or evacuated glass envelope or alternatively in glass solid solid glass pellet
now we see the ntc thermal characteristics so the resistance temperature characteristics of a typical thermistor is shown in figure and it obeys an exponential law and is given by r is equals to a exponential of b by t so here capital r is the resistance of the thermistor capital t is the temperature of the thermistor in degree celsius capital b is the characteristic temperature of the thermistor in degree kelvin and small a is equals to the capital a and that is the constant so the vi characteristics of a typical bed thermistor is shown in figure that is on the next slide this one so as the current through the thermistor is increased from zero the voltage across bed will initially increase linearly indicating that the resistance of the device is constant as the current is increased self fitting of thermistor occurs and the resistance decreases and the voltage increase departs from linearity and the voltage increase departs from linearity so further current increase causes the voltage to increase to a maximum then to decrease and the thermistor behaves as a negative slope resistor now the applications thermistor is used as temperature sensor in such fields as temperature measurement temperature control temperature compensation so in addition to the above fields thermistor is used for power measurement thermal conductivity directions or thermal conductivity detections surge suppressions time delay and fluid flow sensing the second thermistor is the positive temperature coefficient thermistor and the ptc thermistors are manufactured by using either germanium or silicon on semiconducting barium titanate so when the silicon on semiconducting barium titanate is used then that are the pc thermistor ptc thermistors and are called the switching ptc thermistors now when the silicon germanium is uh, used on semiconducting barium titanate then uh, the that type of thermistors are prepared by forming an ohmic contact to opposite faces of a rectangular block of suitably doped silicon axial lead wires are attached usually by soldering to the contact areas and the unit is encapsulated either in glass or more commonly by molding in an epoxy resin so in commercial processes by producing positive temperature coefficient switching thermistors great care is taken to use high purity materials since unwanted impurities can cause large variations in final device properties so the oxides carbonates or oxalates of the required elements are accurately weighed and mixed well so the dried mix is calcinated at about 1100 degrees celsius and reduced in practical size then dried mixed with a binder and pressed into the desired shape they are then sintered at about 1350 degrees celsius and the electrical contacts are attached to the opposite faces of a disc or ends of rod it so as shown in figure the vi characteristics of the positive temperature coefficient thermistor comprises three distinct regions so the region oa represents the region where ohms law is obeyed point a indicates the temperature at which the positive temperature coefficient switch characteristics is commencing then ab ab represents the region of increasing temperature then at b the resistance maximum of the resistance per temperature curve is reached at point b the resistance maximum of the resistance per temperature curve is reached and the subsequent negative temperature region causes a turn over in vi characteristics in this region right so one of the major application of positive temperature coefficient switching thermistor is for over temperature protection of electric motors now we'll see the varistors 
varistors are also known as voltage sensitive resistors so resistor whose electrical resistance varies with applied voltage is a voltage va variable resistor or varistor and they can be divided into two classes that is the device with symmetrical vi characteristics and the device with non symmetrical vi characteristics so first we will see the non symmetrical varistors so all non symmetrical varistors consist of three essential elements and that is a semiconductor body and two electrodes so in copper oxide varistor or means uh, rectifiers so these rectifiers or copper oxide varistors are manufactured as discs or plates and they are essentially made up of high purity copper metal plate on which a layer of cuprous oxide has been produced by oxidation at elevated temperature so the ohmic contact with the oxide layer is achieved by evaporation of a silver or gold electrode onto the rough and cuprous oxide layer now in uh, copper sulfide varistors in comparison with the copper oxide and selenium devices so the copper sulfide varistors are produced in smaller numbers and their construction is similar to that of the copper oxide varistor consisting of magnesium base plate on which is formed a layer of cupric sulfide right so according to that the characteristics of non symmetrical varistor is shown in the figure and the characteristics given the relationship between the current flowing through the device and the voltage applied is as per the curves shown in figure so the in the first quadrant uh, it is showing the rising curve and in the third quadrant it is the reverse characteristics right so the forward direction characteristics can be expressed by the equation i is equals to ae now what is i i is the current and e is the voltage and n is the constant so the magnified reverse characteristics is shown in the third quadrant now the symmetrical varistors so the symmetrical varistors are the devices and are manufactured by pressing or extruding a mixture of silicon carbide grains clay and graphite into the desired geometrical shape so the green body is fired at 1100 degrees celsius in a nitrogen hydrogen atmosphere in a rapidly heating and cooling cycle and that's why the vi characteristics of a symmetrical varistor is essentially the same as that of the forward direction characteristics of non symmetrical varistor and the uh, and the relationship between the current and and voltage is same as that uh, given by the equation i is equals to ae n so this relationship defines this characteristics i is equals to ae a is what is the area i is the current a is the voltage and is the constant right so what is uh, i i is the current a is the voltage and a and n are constant empirical constants so i and e are also the instantaneous current and voltage and a is constant and n is the factor which lies between 1 and 6 for silicon carbide varistors now the applications of the varistors the varistors are especially symmetrical varistors and these are employed as voltage regulators and as such have advantage over non symmetrical devices in that way they can be applied to both ac and dc sources so they are used as protective devices in tv receivers and as large units in lightning arresters now the variable resistors there are two general categories of variable resistors first one is the general purpose and then precision the general purpose resistors can again be classified as wire wound and carbon types so the precision types are always wire wound and follow linear sine cosine or other mathematical laws so the general purpose types usually follow a linear law but some follow logarithmic law so a variable type of carbon resistor is shown in figure and the carbon track t 
is formed of a similar mixture of carbon, resin and clay, pressed and baked into shape as in the making of fixed carbon resistors. Then the ends of the ring track are sprayed with metal and soldering tags that are T1 and T2 and are fixed to provide end connections. Then the tag T2 connects to spring cursor C which is rotated over the track by the spindle S to which a control knob is usually affixed. So the flat on S marked by F takes the grip of the gov screw securing the control knob to the end of the spindle. So the connections are provided to both ends of the resistance track and the component can be used as a series variable resistor or as a potential divider. So here the resistors are completed. So there are various types of resistors and variable resistors. And also we have completed the VI characteristics. Then also the uh, characteristics of thermistors also. Right? So here the register part of the unit 6 is completed. So thank you. In the next lecture we will see the inductors and capacitors.